Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a tier ranking video. I'm going to rank all these books that I studied for my MA course in literature and philosophy. So um, some of these are American and British dramas and some of them are just general fiction, non-fiction and some of these books were required reading for trauma studies and some of them were for experimental fiction. I'm gonna briefly talk about what all these categories are. So mind blown at the top means that it's my favorite and it just made my head spin. I instantly loved it. I loved everything about the um, text. So it goes to the top of the list, the t top of the tier. And then you have great, which is uh, something that was really awesome and it had explored a lot of themes and had a lot of um, debatable issues and everything that comes into light and then next is okay which is what just good or was not bad just the mediocre version right there and um you have a need to reread so some of this text i've not read for the last two or three years so i must have forgotten about most of them and um if there's something that i feel like i need to reread um, then I'm just going to keep it in that category. And then next is trash. That is self-explanatory. It's something that I absolutely hated while I read it and I just did not get any um, pleasure out of reading that and I did not understand um, how the course of events happened and like the ending and everything. If, if I was really underwhelmed, then I'm just gonna go in the trash. So let's uh, get started. Uh, first is Stephen King. 112263. This is a need to reread for me because I know this is a favorite of a lot of people and this is a great book. And I know the plot line that is about JFK's assassination and the character goes back in time and tries to alter it. He tries to change um, and make sure that the assassination does not happen. And then a course of events happen and um, he will start to question whether he did the right thing or the wrong thing because different things are going to happen and a lot of other things that he overlooked will be impacted by his um, actions. So it's a lot of, it's a good book and um, I'll get around to that and read it. So next is Anil's Ghost. I'm going to put it in the trash. I loved reading about Sri Lankan Civil War. Um, it's very heartbreaking to have such an event in history and there's so many um, things you can learn out of the Civil War and um, I think I read, I just um, got more knowledge out of reading these different websites and articles online um, and I also watched a few movies about this Civil War so I got most of my knowledge from there rather than this book because this book tries to give you this aesthetic side, this art and literature vibes with the symbols and characters but the way it was written was really complex and I just could not really get into the stews of the characters and it just did not move me at all. Next is Antigone and put it in the grey because this has a very powerful female character and it gives this ambivalent view whether God's rule is higher than the state rule and um, the female character here is uh, kind of rebellious in nature and she just stands up for what she believes in and that's a great quality to have and it's a bit tragic how it ends but um, it's a great play. It's very entertaining. Next is a number and I'm gonna put it in great. This is a drama about a man who clones his children and all of his children have different weird numbers as their names and these clones they know who their father is but they don't have a mother because they were just prepared in the lab and it explores this um, relationship between the father and the sons and um, it has this futuristic scenario and it tries to give us this overview on what's really going to happen when clones are a possibility, when humans can be made in the lab and is it going to go as smoothly as we really think it would and 
it's, it, it covers a lot of issues and I it was just like heartbreaking the way that it um, ends. Uh, next is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I love this book and I was mind blown. It was just a really great read for me and wonderful. It was written in such a language that just captivated me from the early on and I was feeling for these characters and I was picturing everything happen, people storming into the Bastille and this French Revolution in full swing and all these characters um, anticipating for something to happen and um, finally taking charge and just going up against the brutal um, state and just trying to get their human rights and going for the liberty and it's not really justifiable the uh, course of actions they take like um, they just get very violent but these peasants they have a dream and they just try to make it happen and just a really thrilling story to read next is Catch-22 and it's goes to the mind blown because the character of Yossarian and all these other soldiers in this book is just like it's a narrative of these interwoven stories of being caught up in a position where you just can't escape and um, most of these soldiers are not really passionate about being in the war but they've been drafted uh, against their wish so and um, they're just trying to want to get out but their squadron it's just like a trap to them just there's no way that they can get out of there because it's like really being in a situation where it's unimaginable for them to escape because every attempt is just um, it, it backfires and um, these characters just go through such different events and a lot of experience in there and it's the best thing about it is like very hilarious it has this comedic tone to it and everything they do is absurd it's so fun to read about it and it's a it's a very thick book but um just you just you just get through it like once you begin you just can't stop with this book it's very good next is the cherry orchard a play and i'm gonna say great because in the cherry orchard you have the historical instance of um the russian uh, feudalism and how the russian feudalism was just going over um, it was gonna end and the middle class were just gaining the power they were on the rise and uh, the socio-political system of russia how the aristocrats they suddenly start to lose power and the middle class rises out of them and um, the cherry orchard is very symbolic so you have this character um, Lopakhin and Lopakhin or <laughs> I was sort of forgotten it but um, he's this middle class man who used to be a, a servant's son in the cherry orchard and the mansion that is in the estate and um, so he grows up and he's a, he works as a merchant and he makes a lot of money and um, he gets to the state where he can afford to buy the cherry orchard where he grew up and where he was just a s son of the servant and it's like a whole overturn of how the aristocracy is um, absurd and they just have this spend thrift nature and then the middle class takes over this significant event in Russian history like it just captures it so beautifully and it's it's a great story and then you have Crash by J.G. Ballard I'm gonna put it in the trash because even though it covers this theme or this kind of story that is so unique but is very explicit and it's very bizarre it's also um, kind of uh, it's, it's just not something that you would read on a daily basis. It's so disturbing. It's about this character who is so obsessed with car crashes and he feels this sexual pleasure when he watches car crashes or he's in car crashes. And it's just a maniac. It's just a crazy book. It's so bizarre and um, it's, it's, it's not a great read at all. 
and next is um, King's Horseman. I'm gonna put in okay though it talks about this um, culture and uh, significance of rituals and different norms and values of African um, society how the community the community is really strong and there's no sense of individualistic the society and I really loved um, reading about it but um, it was not very captivating to me next death of a salesman I'm just gonna go to mind blown so why not <laughs> um, this play just dismantles Aristotle's idea of tragedy like um, to have this Greek tragic moment you need this noble hero but in death of a salesman it's just this commoner just this um, man a plebeian a peasant he's just experienced this trauma and this tragedy and the point of this play is to show that even the commoner can have this intense form of tragic experience and we can really get a kind of social scenario and a social understanding of um, how, what life is and how meaningless it can be and um, what is the lack of identity in yourself in the society that you live in and whether there's this emptiness in the society and everything like this existential crisis and everything and um, the hollow American dream always because there's a lot of literature uh, that really depicts that American dream is just imagination is this, this illusion and um, that's what it is like um, an illusion of uh, American dream in this play and this is also um, mind-blowing to read. It's a great read. Next, we have um, Dr. Faustus. And I'm just going to put it in... Okay. It has a really great concept about this man who is really hungry for power, beauty, and knowledge. And he's into necromancy. And he's just not satisfied with... Um, the knowledge that he has and then he trades his soul for to the devil to have all these different kinds of pleasures and he goes around having um, fun with all these seven deadly sins and he just lives his life without caring for anything and then then comes this um, part in the end of the play where he has to go to the judgment for everything that he has um, done and uh, there's a really powerful uh, lines spoken in this book but it's very complex and complicated to really get through um, it's not really friendly to read it but it was written so many years ago like in the 16th century so or the 17th century um, so it's it's just not, it's really hard to get into, but the underlying theme and ideas and everything is like great. Then you have Frankenstein, and I'm just gonna put it in great. It's not mind blowing for me, even though um, it explores this other side of um, society where it's like, you know, the creator versus the creature, um, and um, how the machines like if they took take over which is like the reality now but back then how mary shelley was able to imagine creating a creature out of the lab and then um it's having all these emotions sentiments as a human being it was like itself a great idea back then um something that was impossible and um, but this does explore this deep issues whether the society is really um, ready for this species of other types of human who can potentially be dangerous but potentially could work out well also but this is just a warning um, to the society as a well. whole and everybody knows about Frankenstein so I'm not gonna really talk about it a lot so the next is to kill a mockingbird I'm gonna put it in the grid. It talks about Scout Finch, her gross 
mentally and how she just goes from understanding um, the racial hatred and how you should not really be judgmental of other people unless you can see from this perspective and unless you understand them and it really captures this racial south of america during the um, time of 1960s and before that as well and um, this is a great book and it's a classic for a reason next is this, if this is a man by primo levy and yes i enjoyed it it was great oh, it's a really hard touching story because this exploration of dehumanization of people and how his own memoir about having this relationship with his father and being together in the concentration camp and how he feels a lack of um, it's like a sense that he is has let down his father and um, he's just trying to cope up with this reality of being in a position where he just does not have this this willingness to really get through life and though um, he's really hopeful and he really gets out of it being a survivor I think he, he just carries a lot of the trauma that he felt within the concentration camp and it just um, overshadows his life even after his experience there next we have King Solomon's Mines and I'm gonna say it was great I really enjoyed it. It's kind of anti-colonial story. So is these um, colonists going to an African territory and then trying to discover this pristine land, this community that was hidden in the hills and they just try to exploit what they have. But um, it also tries to show that it just is colonialism is just a shallow representation of how people just try to uh, improve in others communities and try to uh, show them how they should live their life and everything explaining expanding their culture into them and then um, just killing their tribal authenticity and norms and values and traditions and rituals and everything like but it's a adventure novel and it's, it's fiction and it's um, very beautifully written and explores a lot of concepts. Then you have Macbeth and I'm gonna say my learn because I really loved the atmosphere of Macbeth. And the witches, the ghost and um, the foreshadowing techniques, the way it was um, told was like this steps in a kind of a sensual experience so you get to this point at the bottom of like the beginning of Macbeth and everything's like okay and then goes um, this intensity of the play where you suddenly see like Macbeth being in this situation where he, uh, he's being brainwashed and he's just misinterpreting the witches um, kind of like uh, fortune telling of himself and everything and how it just goes to this uh, height where it's so sublime and you feel this intense terror and you feel this intense pleasure it's what you're witnessing and it's just a great um, story overall a great play and you have Major Barbara by George Bernard Shaw now this I'm gonna say it was was okay um so Major Barbara she's a lady who works for the Salvation Army and the Salvation Army is a kind of a organization where they help um, for the charitable donations and helping the poor and the diseased and um, disabled and everything and um, she gets into this thoughts when she realizes that Salvation Army is actually funded by a booze company and a arms uh, manufacturing company and she just thinks about it like 
it's a kind of an issue for her because she, she just cannot understand why something um, that is like, you know, this booze and war and manufacturing um, equipments and um, weapons and everything, like, it just does not seem um, kind of a good thing for her because she believes that Salvation Army should be untouched by these um, companies that incite evil practices and immoral practices in society. And then so there's, it just ensues on talking about that, um, debating whether what is really the right approach and what she should be okay with and whether she's okay. I mean, she's right about thinking about it that way. Next we have Hammett, the Maltese Falcon. I'm just gonna send you to reread. I've watched the movie twice and I've read the book, but I still just can't wrap my head around it. I'm still like, I don't know how it ends. So <laughs> it's the time for reread. And now we have Marisa Lamote. I'm gonna say, okay. It does have this comedy of manners in the restoration area. And, um, it explores this hypocrisy of people in the society who are repressed but then they openly have this adultery and then they explore different relationships. It was something that was untimely for that period to write about but um, John Ryden really tries to explore those issues. Then you have Master Builder and it goes to mind blown because the Master Builder um, Soulness So this man <laughs> um, It was it's like really Great to explore The relationship With um, The Master Builder and Hilda Who is a young woman who comes back to his life And how she Just encroaches upon his um, sense of um, placidness, his sense of being really firm with who he is and what he's doing and she just kind of shakes his up his world and he suddenly is overcome by feeling romantic and trying to feel youthful and trying to be overachieving and she just incites a deep desire within him to showcase the way his energy, youth, and power, and everything that he was before, and then show his overcome by this ambitious nature, and uh, he's misled, and the way the events really unfold in this play, it's just was really mind blowing to see this pinnacle of the drama in the end, the way that it ends. I think that is the best part of this drama, and then I was just mind blown how it ended. And you have Mother Courage by Bertolt Brecht. And this is just an instant absolute favorite of mine because you have this absolutely strong old woman who is just pushing her wagon through the battlefield and she's just trying to live her life. She's just trying to survive in this world where wars are never ending. They're just constant. And in this 12 years... Um, a mother Curse goes from places to places and she's selling um, the soldiers with goods, food, um, equipment, anything, clothing, everything that she can um, sell to them. And um, she's just making her, uh, like, she's sustaining her life out of that. And in the course of 12 years, she goes through a personal loss as well. She has children, but she loses them one by one. And... Um, but she's like very emotionally adept at not showing how it has affected her. She sings a lot of the times in the plays and she tries to get over this grief, this sorrow, this haunting terror that is in her life. And she really gets through them well. And even though she's very traumatized by everything happening around her, she is very strong and she moves on. Her life goes on. And she carries on as usual because there's nothing else she can do. She just achieved this state of um, life where 
she can just pick up where she left and she just can go on from there and it's just um great drama i think everyone should read that next is morning becomes electra i'm gonna say okay and this is a very trippy drama there's a lot of um bizarre incidents happen there's murder there's mystery there's incest and this is a uh, vaguely um kind of connecting to electra complex by carl jung and it also has this edible complex uh, proposed by sigmund freud so you have this incestuous relationships and it just this play just insane and it's very long as well like it's told in three parts next is morambi the book of bones and i'm gonna say wait love reading all those narratives short narratives of people and um and this is much more realistic than fictional and i would say that it does not really have that aesthetic side of you know exploring it through this lens of art and literature it's a non-fiction and but it just explores this narratives of different people the perpetrator and the victims of um rwandan genocide and you can see the threshold between what is life and what is death what it means to be a perpetrator what it means to be a victim and whether the perpetrators are really the perpetrators or where they've been subjected to that life um without having choices to uh, get away from it and all that so next is night by ellie weasel i'm gonna say this was great it's uh, a memoir and it also explores the events that happen in the concentration camp and how Ellie Weasel sees all this um, fire and death and decay all around him. But he just tries to stay strong and he tries to be hopeful about being redeemed from that place. Next is 2010 Odyssey 2. I'm going to put it in the trash because... I just could not read the book from like from the beginning to the end. I just had to skip through so many pages because it was just boring, it was just long and it did not read like a story at all. It's not a good experience at all. Next is Remnants of Oswich. I'm gonna say okay because it explores a lot of these issues of whether um, who are the true witnesses of concentration camp, whether it is those survivors are the witnesses or are those who lost their lives, who went through the torture, are they the witnesses? And um, that's a thin line between that, like it's threshold, how you can really view that. And Adam Ben says that truly, if we really see from an objective point of view, you can really see that the ones who lost their lives, the ones who died, they are the true witnesses of the horror and they are the only ones who could really tell about this experience, they could narrate their stories but um, unfortunately they're the ones who are dead so we can't ever hear their narrative so we cannot feel like what it's like um, to be in their shoes because we just don't, um, we're not able to picture it because they're dead and they're voiceless and their stories will never get told. Um, and he also talks about Muslim men and other different terms used in the concentration camp and um, being in the bottom of the um, concentration camp, like seeing the bottom, hitting the bottom is where you suddenly have this realization, this last learning of what dehumanization is really like then you have uh, slaughterhouse by kurt vonnegut it was okay you don't have much to say about this but then it just like goes on between this different periods of time back and forth and it's very experimental in its technique and structure how it's said the plot is very experimental it's unique but just because it goes back and forth in the storyline and um, the way it's written is not really the kind of language I really appreciate, so it's going to stay in okay. So the next is the America play. I'm just going to say it's okay. It has the central metaphor of digging. 
um, this archaeological um, exploration of the myths of Lincoln and how it can be deconstructed and it can be rebuilt to um, make it more authentic the way um, the way it was in the history. So next is the Dark Dancer. I'm gonna put it in the trash because I did not like the way it was told. It is about the partition of violence and the uh, period between when all these brutal events were taking place between uh, India and Pakistan during the independence and it's a very um, important issue to um, talk about in literature and try to uh, help others visualize it and learn from it but um, just did not get into the head of the characters, did not enjoy the storyline and anything that had to do with it but I did enjoy a little bit of the snippets of um, the interpretation of how it affects the characters in the book um, next is John Steinbeck, The Grapes of Wrath I'm gonna say it was great this book is really complex to uh, read because it does use some kind of dialects of the south america but um really love this uh, event in um historical timeline where there's like dust bowl and the great migration of people from the east to the west and trying to uh, find a better life out there trying to rebuild what they've lost and um, this is a tale of 20 families who are traveling with each other trying to get to um, the west to uh, California and uh, in the way they just share all these uh, stories with each other and they're just having this one true experience they're united within themselves and they share their sorrows, they share their happiness, and a lot of things happen in this book. There's a very strong female figure. The mother is just um, taking care of everything, and she's very headstrong. She's very intelligent, and, and it's a really good fiction book. And now you have The Handmaid's Tale, and it's gonna go in trash. And I'm not sorry about this at all. It could be favorite of some people and it's a very strong feminist text. But what I just did not like is like... Um, I just felt that it was kind of disturbing. Um, it just emulates this kind of scenario where 1984 by George Orwell is also kind of similar where you get overtaken by people in this new version of society where you don't have rights to go against the state and somebody else is governing your life and you have no freedom and then we're just captured into this um, mechanic person like without feelings and emotions or anything like you just get trapped and this is just like that and um, um, it's very problematic it just has a lot of issues that I just don't understand and I just don't want to get into um, the houses the house on Mango Street now this is a very heartbreaking story I'm just gonna say okay cuz it explores this um, kind of you could say this Mexican community and um, Hispanic community in America and how they're just living in this uh, place where it's driven by poverty, it's driven by, um, again, racial hatred, and it's like the deprivation, the discrimination, everything comes into play in this uh, novel, and it's also about a growth of the character. But she goes through a lot of horrendous things, and um, it's a very pitiful kind of a... A very sympathetic book and it's just heartbreaking and it's just not a good to read at all but it does have a strong point to make 
Now, Passion of New Eve, it will go to Mind Blown. This book by Angelic Carter is so different. It uh, talks about this dystopian society where New York is overrun by rats and, and disease and infestation and everything. And um, the central character, the um, man who starts off as a male, goes into the transformation of a woman. Um, um, and uh, it's just kind of very interesting how it happens. And there's this feeling of vengeance and um, the feeling of getting uh, the redemption and how he treats women and female characters at the beginning of the story. It just is going to come back haunting to him later because when he is forcefully transformed into a woman himself he faces it like firsthand on what it like what it's like to be a woman and um what disadvantages are there and he goes through a lot of things and it's a kind of a learning curve for him and it's it's really this book is just mind-blowing and it's just so interesting to read and next, The Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare. I'm just going to say, okay. Wasn't really um, mind blown by it or anything like um, It was just okay. It was just like this romantic, um, romantic, tragic, tragic story. And now you have Martin Amis, Time's Arrow. It's a great book. And Time's Arrow is this book which talks about this um, doctor, a Nazi German doctor, who tries to um, emulate different personalities and tries to change his uh, identity. So he starts off as a Nazi doctor and then he changes multiple identities and people remember him as a different person. But the best thing about this book is the structure and I love it. It starts from the end and then slowly goes towards the beginning. But then it goes through the whole reverse process, which is like if you read from the back of the book to the beginning, then it makes sense. But then you're not supposed to really read like that. You're just supposed to begin from the end and then go through the back to, to the start. And it's this reverse storytelling technique is so... Um, different and it's just just um innovative and i really loved about that and now um utopia i'm just gonna put in need to reread something i just don't remember a lot of things about it but i know that it's a great book vagabond i'm gonna say need to reread i just read the first volume and the uh, illustrations were so good and the story was really good too but I just need to get to other volumes and read through the entire series of that next um, Samuel Beckett waiting for Godot it's gonna go to mind blown because this waiting for Godot keeps coming back into my life so when I was uh, studying in high school I had a course um, where I had to read about waiting for Godot and at that time, I also watched a movie and I went through the text. And then later, so in Masters, also I had to go read this text, Waiting for Godot. And it's a very good text. I love it. And I would enjoy reading it again. Like, it's a pleasure to reread it. These two characters, they always amuse me. And then it just captures this life in this play in a way where you just are like hard hit with the numbing factual representation of what life really is it's just a life where you're waiting for something to happen and it's just not going to happen you're just going to be wishful you're going to be hoping for something to take place and um if you just don't drive your life by your own hands, if you are not ambitious, then you're just going to be waiting for something by the roadside and it's never going to happen. You're just going to lose your time. And yeah, it just, life is meaningless, truly, if you really go through this play and you just feel it, you feel this atmosphere, you feel this uh, fear of these characters and it just consumes you with... Um, 
a thought of what life really is and whether we really know a central meaning to life and whether it just makes sense at all because we don't know what happens after this and there's so many things that are mysteries about life and um, it's a lot of things to really think about and next the widow renter i'm just putting gonna put it in the trash because i just did not like it it's about nathaniel bacon and the revolution and that goes in jamestown america um it's a historical text and kind of explores about this event socio-political events of um that time and did not enjoy this play at all it's just not my style then you have Wuthering Heights. I'm gonna put it in the mind blog because Wuthering Heights, these characters, you know, goes like reality in stone in an atmosphere of like this dark woods and this romantic um, story between Heathcliff and Catherine and how they it just does not work out between them and how Heathcliff changes into a man of this brutal nature and he just hides within himself and Catherine is just busy getting um, her life somewhere else. Oh. So Withering, Withering Heights is a gothic story where you get this um, atmosphere of this dark woods mansion and um, the binary between person with privileges and a person who has nothing, an orphan. And how this interplay between people who seem to be more civilized, more seem to be more um, rich and um, have a lot of uh, like physical fulfillment, pleasures and everything, versus a man who is deprived of um, love who's deprived of getting even the basic um, emotions, sentiments from others is like you see how they grow together and then apart from that and Heathcliff is a really a tragic hero and Heathcliff is such a complex character to study he's very interesting and um, it's a really emotionally touching story and you have Catherine who is a little bit flippant she does she just overlooks um, Heathcliff and this interplay of um, two different worlds and whether it can emerge together as one or it's just going to break apart and pulled away altogether like it just this story this um, this narration it just so um, interesting, it's so exciting and Wuthering Heights is really one of the greatest classics ever written and it stands as one of my favorite. So we got to the end of the video and <laughs> this is the final rank of all of these books. I hope you really enjoyed this and if I've um, ranked something that you really love really low in this tier then um, it's just subjective to taste and it's okay if you love them and I don't and I'm really going to uh, tell all of you to check out the books that I put in the mind blown category and the great as well because these books are really going to change your life and the way you see the world. It's just going to enrich your perspective and give you more fuller understanding of this world we live in. Um, so thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in next one. Bye.